Hi guys, good morning. Uh, welcome to a new month and a new week. Uh, what an incredible one it was yesterday. Uh, we saw some unbelievable moves uh, in the markets. We'll have a quick look over just how we're trading now. As uh, Well, if you were stayed up till uh, 11 p.m. last night and seen stocks gap down over 500 points, you'd be thinking, well, you'd be coming in this morning to see uh, a lot, lot worse. That isn't the case. Uh, this morning, the S&P currently up 55 points. Uh, the Dow Jones up 530. The DAX 250 uh, as well. So incredible moves this morning as we're seeing. Safe Hames has come off a touch as well. Oil nearly up two bucks. Uh, we've just seen over the last few minutes, pound come under pressure. Uh, as Bank of England have just come out and said they will uh, take all needed steps to protect stability, uh, which has kind of been the uh, the theme following Jerome Powell on Friday, but the theme that we've seen from uh, central banks over the weekend as well, which has helped our recovery really from gapping lower. Uh, you can see here, if we just move over to the uh, the map that we've, we've liked to show, in the total confirmed cases, deaths and total recovered, uh, over the weekend, this number of uh, new cases has increased, obviously in Italy, uh, most notably cancelling football games, doing masses live on Facebook. Uh, the panic and fear is, is really setting in. And, and I think that fear is, is the main thing that, uh, that gripped markets last week. And I was just reading Anthony's macro menu, you know, I'll post the, the link into the chat if you haven't done so already, it really is. Uh, fantastic addition on, on Sunday just to, to get you in the mood for the week and uh, he was talking about well, this sort of time last week but about the, the three factors uh, that could really trigger uh, the loss of investor confidence you can see that last one there the most influential fear uh, if we switch back over to the charts and just bring in uh, the S&P I'm just going to put this on all of, yet, all of last week and you can see I mean, it was such an incredible move but that really was the fear starting to, to kick in and, and the panic in the markets I mean you were seeing uh, certainly in the Dow Jones there was minutes where it was doing 100 points a minute 500 points every five minutes in opposite directions I mean the range for the day today if we have a look at the, the low around 24,850 we're already over a thousand points higher than that and almost about to hit 26,000. So it really is incredible conditions. Volatility absolutely is back in the market. I've got a couple of charts here to uh, focus on uh, from more on the European side, but just to put, put things into perspective, you've got uh, here, even Brexit 2011 debt crisis didn't hurt Europe so much on a weekly basis. You can see here, this is the biggest change uh, percentage wise to the downside since well pretty much 2008 the the great financial crisis there which is you know really incredible you can see here European stocks volatility jumps the highest level since the sovereign debt crisis back in uh, 2011 you know these charts really will be talked about for, for quite some time you've seen here investor panic raises over one trillion dollars from the stock 600 uh, and also, you know, to be no surprise here, travel stocks lead the drop among uh, European sectors since the, uh, the all-time highs that we saw certainly in the, in the DAX, but incredible moves really in the market. It wasn't too long ago, obviously we're talking about Europe there, but even in America, we were all all-time highs and, and now uh, uh, we, we obviously under 10% lower, that correction the fastest uh, since the 30s. If we just put a currency tool there just to have a look at the percentage we were down at 1.16.4 percent uh, now currently just under uh, 13 percent 12.2 also worth having a look longer term charts and if you've read that macro menu from from Anthony you'd have noted where we had found support on Friday's low let me just remove the pivots here uh, and bring in Fibonacci which people will look at in, in moves like this when prices you know, correcting itself lower. Uh, you can see, sorry, this is the Dow. I was wondering why it wasn't marked up there nicely. You can see here on the S&P, that 50% Fib level, also the lows that we had back on October 2019 uh, has provided excellent support. Will this be the low then? Uh, time will tell. Uh, one of the reasons we, we gapped lower initially uh, on the weekend was China posted its weakest factory 
uh, activity on record. You can see here the manufacturing PMI number coming at 35.7. They've been consistently pretty much bang on 50 uh, there or above, there or, or, or abouts. This is the weakest it's been. Here, just put in on the 10 year chart, uh, make this a, a column. You can just see just how it's a little dot, little dot, bottom right. Put it on the max, and you can see just out of nowhere uh, that uh, that number appearing. Um, obviously, the coronavirus effect starting to filter into markets, and along with new cases being announced this weekend, it wasn't too surprising to see us gap lower. Uh, Jerome Powell on Friday evening basically said we're we're ready to, to cut rates whenever uh, if needed, and that gave the markets a bit of a boost and. Uh, other than this Chinese data, if, if I was thinking Friday evening, I was actually saying, well, I reckon you know, there's a potential that we actually gap up on Sunday. We gap down and really the Chinese uh, data, the reason for that. However, we have uh, obviously seen this recovery in early trade. Uh, Japan, uh, Bank of Japan joined the, the Fed in issuing a rare statement assuring that appropriate actions will be taken. It's uh, priced in that the RBA are going to cut interest rates tomorrow. Um, so really you know the the argument for you know whether this is going to work as well you can cut rates but that's not going to stop a, a virus spreading and, and that is of course true and it might well be that it's just a, a momentary uh, halt for, for stocks there's certainly some very key levels to keep an eye on to the upside any of these previous lows and you know there was a, a good tweet I saw I think it was this morning but it may have been from yesterday and it's saying nothing changes sentiment like price. If you suddenly get a, a massive push to the upside, we break above this previous support that obviously would act as resistance from above 3068. That longer term trend line comes back into play around probably 3120. Uh, and suddenly things are forgotten about and we can push on and on and on. Oil, you see here, you know, might be that, you know, that meeting in Thursday uh, in Vienna, some comments come out that are positive and suddenly that low around the 2018 low that we saw is also a time where buyers have come back in we then get back above $50 and well the worst is behind us of course it's not that simple and it's going to be a headline driven market I'd be very uh, very wary of, of things this week just because we're having a strong start doesn't necessarily mean you know each of the next four days following this are going to be massively uh, positive um, so central banks happy to uh, play the whatever it takes kind of card um, it's uh, gonna be it's gonna be an interesting interesting day. Can this be sustained? Cash open will be something you know I'd be very much keeping an eye on. For for me personally, looking to trade, I'd rather just wait and see how we pan out. It's always a perhaps a tricky day on the Monday, especially when you've had a week of really aggressive selling. You know, this it's no guarantee that that's gonna continue, and that can obviously catch quite a a lot of people out there. So the main reason for the recovery. Uh, central banks uh, to the rescue. Uh, just to summarise, the Bank of Japan, uh, Japan, they're you know happy to uh, provide uh, some you know ample liquidity. They're but they're offered to buy 500 billion yen worth of Japanese government bonds. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, they're helping things there, and you can see the article from Kuroda. Uh, so we have a quick look over at the Nikkei. Oh, sorry, here's the the article. I just posted in but just having a look here at the Nikkei as well recovering quite strongly uh, also what we saw last week which I think caught quite a lot of people off guard was was gold uh, just bringing this picture uh, the chart in you can see Friday a really strong move lower here haven't seen a, a move like that for quite some time the last time we moved in either direction uh, that that much was was back in uh, 2016 Brexit we are very much contained from the first uh, from Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, there was no real move higher or lower. A lot of people were expecting a push to the upside. Uh, we obviously we got higher on Monday morning. Uh, however, Friday really was uh, the one that broke the camel's back, breaking that support area and pushing lower quite aggressively. And this was the same during the financial crisis back in 2008. Gold initially did move lower as investors seeked uh, safer safe havens if you like like say T notes which you can see if I bring this in here uh, had a superb week and, and pushed quite aggressively to the upside gold struggling a, a bit that's not to say gold keeps coming lower and lower and lower if I bring on the uh, financial crisis let's just bring that into picture go back to 
2008. You can see initially here, this is that push lower uh, through October, obviously with the Lehman Brothers collapse, and it wasn't really until the back end of the last week of October that we started to, to rally. Uh, and if you bought there and held till now, you'd be very happy, <laughs> of course. Uh, so overall, it seems like we're just having a bit of a reversal. I would be very patient, though, no, still today. First day of the week, no real range uh, come in. Is the the central bank move actually going to last? Should they even cut rates? I think that's a, a debate for, for now. The last coordinated cut from central banks was March 2011, so potentially something there to, to keep an eye on uh, as well. Uh, so other headlines to, to go over. Uh, I want to keep it relatively brief today as things are moving and it's going to be a very headline driven market but China's uh, stock traders are making big bet on fiscal stimulus so all of these headlines here are really going to help to to boost stocks this morning I think it will just be more interesting to see how later on pans out how the cash open is going to to take this news um, is there going to be further developments in say the US I mean you know in, in Europe where we've already seen that that spreading uh, just Today I got a text message through saying my old school has, has been shut down for a couple of weeks. So, you know, we haven't had what China's had yet, uh, or certainly Italy has to that extent. Once this fear picks up again, it could well be that these decisions to potentially cut rates might come a bit too soon. Uh, and if anything, maybe they should just save their ammo. We're obviously in a, a pressure situation and we've seen stocks have a, a very bad week. But we're levels that we were just October last year. So I think if I was uh, Jerome Powell, I would just say, look, you know, it's a, a bad situation. We just need to you know, take time. And, and uh, once the coronavirus does then, you know, just subside a bit, maybe when the weather starts getting better, et cetera, then, you know, at least we've still got ammo that if data was to continue to be poor, we can go from there. But... Yeah, central banks are you know everywhere. The Fed, Bank of England, the Bank of Japan, all out with similar statements over the past 24 hours, pledging support to economy in the face of coronavirus epidemic. And China's stock traders expecting similar things. The Fed, if we have a look at the well, let's just bring it in here. The, the Fed watch tool for the next meeting on March the 17th. Give me one second just to load that up. March 17th and 18th, you can see we are, once that loads, 100% uh, priced in uh, for a cut there. Uh, so, I mean, can you imagine that the, the scenario, if they were to keep rates on hold, I mean, stocks would come down very, very aggressively uh, on that. Also on the macro menu, you've got the, the calendar highlights. It's actually quite a busy day today, uh, and one where, you know, you're going to want to be careful of these these points also a lot of speakers fed speakers this week um the 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 week today you've got obviously the the uk data out in the morning brexit talks starting up again as if we didn't need uh, any other headlines to to take over the market brexit is back uh with uh, uk and you going into to talk tomorrow evening or i said well this evening tomorrow morning you've got the rba rate decision one to keep an eye on with that price uh, that rate cut priced in. I think that could be really the tone for the rest of the week. If they were to make a surprise and keep rates on hold, well, yes, stocks would come down, but in my opinion, I think that would probably be the better decision for things to do. I don't think the rate cut uh, at the moment would be too good. Going into the back end of the week, obviously, with it being non-farm payrolls on Friday, uh, you're gonna have uh, the ADP on the Wednesday, You've got the Vienna OPEC meeting starting on Thursday as well. That's day one of day two. So quite a, quite an interesting week from a data point of view, let alone uh, with the coronavirus fears that are you know, shaping the market uh, as well. Other headlines just to run through. Uh, North Korea uh, marks a year of failed Trump talks with missiles. So as if we didn't need any more issues uh, in the world at the moment. North Korea launching two unidentified projectiles off its eastern coast, South Korea's defense ministry said. Uh, so we have, whether uh, Trump wants to come out and say anything about that would also be pretty key. Uh, the polls 
Well, the, really, the, the election uh, in, in the US is starting to just heat up a bit. A, a few people last week were saying one of the main reasons that we were also coming lower in stocks more aggressively was because of uh, Sanders and his increased chance of actually getting into the White House. Uh, potential for that to increase this week, see how he does in some of the polling. Uh, and if, if Sanders does start to get more of a foothold and Trump's, uh, you know, naivety with the coronavirus uh, catches up with him, we could well see stocks come lower as well. So yes, it's a very good start this morning for um, you know stocks in the US and Europe, but I would just be careful about getting too carried away. Uh, there's that famous dead cat bounce saying, uh, I think we all need to, to be aware of. But at the moment, a couple of days uh, positive after one, two, three, four, five, six down days for the S&P. I would say technically looking at this trade to the upside, uh, the main level I'm keeping an eye on is that 30.68. Such good support back in November and December last year. Uh, and then that could obviously act as a very key resistance level. Above there, you'd have got to imagine the central banks have cut rates and maybe the, uh, the spreading of the virus has just subsided uh, a touch. Back to headlines, uh, you've got Obviously, the, the Brexit talks continuing here, and, and last week the UK outlines objective for US trade talks were 4.4 billion. So quite hawkish rhetoric between the two uh, of of the UK and EU. Um, there's been, you know, rumours that uh, Brexit talks are about to to break down within 14 days. It's going to be a week for certainly on the the pound side of things. That's so going to be headline driven as well. So. You know, while there could well be some, you know, nice technical setups for, you know, the pound. I mean, looking just here at, for example, Thursday and Friday's low. Again, I would be careful about that risk uh, and waiting for that confirmation. We've already had, and this is comments just from the central bank about doing whatever it takes. You know, they've got to bear in mind for for pound traders that there's also going to be uh, Brexit comments that, as we know, can can spike uh, you out of positions pretty quickly. So. Just be uh, careful uh, is what I would say uh, when trading the pound equities as well. It's going to be uh, probably following the similar suit to last week where the mornings are relatively choppy, I would say, and then it's into the afternoon. Once the Americans uh, have woken up, then you're getting those the follow through of there's been new cases here and there. And that's the focus. I mean, we know it's spread here in Europe. We know Italy uh, is you know, struggling you know, as a South Korea, of course, in Asia. Uh, but in the US, I think from an opportunity to see this reverse, we're going to need to see those numbers pick up in the US. And what time do they get released? Well, 4, 4.30, 5 o'clock uh, UK time, uh, i.e. The, the US sort of morning into lunchtime. So just because we have a good morning doesn't guarantee that the afternoon is going to be similar. So that's just something I would bear in mind. Quick look over the calendar before we have a look over some of the, the technical setups. Uh, we go through the morning, you've got to see that uh, German data, 8.55, uh, the market manufacturing at 9 o'clock. Both of those numbers expected to be in contraction uh, territory again, 47.8 for Germany, 49.1 from the EU. Sorry, and then you've got the UK market manufacturing at 9.30. US numbers at 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock. Couple of well, one speaker scheduled, but as we know, central banks uh, will most likely make these comments uh, throughout the day as well. Quick look over. Technically, I brought the uh, the pound into play here for me. That's your your key line in the sand. I think actually, from an opportunities point of view, if we can get back above that level, I don't see uh, any uh, reason why we can't then push to the the high that we had on Friday. I know. Following that Bank of England comment, we're now a fair way off that, but that would be the key level for me. To the downside, if we were to uh, see further weakness uh, on the pound side of things, you can see now we're trading. I mean, this is quite a nice level here, the high that we had on the 11th of October. Uh, could that be the low? I, you know, I'd, I'd say that's a, there's a pretty good case for it to be. Uh, if that was to hold, then suddenly 127 could come in and then. Also, I'm liking the, the look of this level, 126.24. But if we can get above last Monday's high, I think the pound could have a bit of a rally from a, a technical point of view. The euro has been pushing higher recently uh, on the, the dovish uh, bets of the Federal Reserve. 
levels to be aware of. I mean, if you could give me this point here, 111.29, uh, a couple of weeks ago, a bit in your hand off for it. Uh, now we're coming up, you know, it's uh, <laughs> perhaps uh, starting to, to get a bit worried. But here, you can just see just the importance of this point. You want a line in the sand, again, that's a pretty good one to have. To the downside, if you were waiting for maybe some confirmation of some dollar strength to come back in or euro weakness, I think really below 110.24 uh, would be how I'd be looking to play that. Putting it on a, a lower time frame, let's put the pivots on here, you can see then you've got that range, the pivot coming in for there and the R2 to the upside. Uh, we're just pushing two new highs this morning as the dollar weakens. Uh, stocks, we've gone over the, the level in the S&P, you can see today's R1, pretty important. We had some support there on, uh, on Thursday, uh, marks up quite nicely. Uh, and also, you've got the previous high of the day that we broke through around uh, 7.45, 8 o'clock. That's a good enough point as well where you could expect some support. But if we do get below there, things could start to get interesting uh, again. Oil and stocks are going to have a lot of resistance levels uh, to the upside above where we're trading on these previous lows. So just be aware of that. Uh, and same thing uh, you know, across the, the pond for the US stocks and obviously the European ones uh, as well. Any questions as usual, please uh, do let us know. Uh, I would absolutely have a read over Ant's uh, macro menu. I think it's uh, a great addition uh, that he started to, to do uh, and really can help set up for, for the week ahead. In summary, the central banks are providing a, a bounce, whether it be short term or not. Uh, will uh, come down to whether they actually do cut rates. Uh, the RBA first on the, the hit list tonight uh, and whether that keeps getting priced in. Uh, also, any new cases in the US, if that continues to spread and maybe at a more alarming rate, this bounce uh, would uh, be perhaps pretty short-lived. Oil, got to keep an eye, uh, of course, later in the week on OPEC and the pound uh, for any uh, Brexit related comments. It's expected to be a pretty interesting week. Whether it can top the last one uh, or not, I'm not too sure. Uh, but I hope you'll have a, a good one and any questions as usual, please do let us know.